Okay, that's four o'clock now, so we'll probably just get going. Um, just to say hello and welcome to everyone. It's great to see so many people here today. Welcome to our what's going to be our second last webinar of the term. Uh, today, my colleague Alan Wilson is going to be demonstrating the free Seeing AI app from Microsoft and, and talking about how it can not only support those with visual impairment, but also those with literacy difficulties. So his presentation will be about 20 minutes, and then there'll be an opportunity to ask questions at the end via the chat pane, which uh, if on Collaborate here is down on the bottom right-hand uh, side of your screen. Just click open the purple chevron, and you'll see the little chat bubble. So we can get some questions in there at the end. OK, uh, over to you, Alan. Right, great. Thank you, Shirley. This webinar is coming to you from I was going to say sunny Dunbar, but it's actually started becoming quite cloudy over the, over the, the side there. Um, Dunbar, for people not aware, is 30 miles down the east coast from Edinburgh, so it's, it's coming from my, my bedroom. Um, anyway, to the webinar. I'm going to be talking about seeing AI, but first, I've got to think about um, advantage, nice things about using text-to-speech software. Um, I'm sure we all agree that use of text-to-speech software provides independent access to digital text and making a huge difference to the lives of people with a visual impairment, dyslexia, or reading difficulties. But what if digital text is not available? Is there anything to help somebody read a traditional paper book, for example, or an article in a magazine, or information from a digital display, or leaflet with instructions, or a warning notice in the park? product information in the supermarket? The answer is, of course, yes. Over the last few years, several apps have become available for tablets and smartphones to take photographs of text, convert it into a read readable text, and allow a person with reading difficulty to listen to it being read out. These apps include KNFB Reader, Prismo, Claro Scan Pen, Microsoft Office Lens, and Seeing AI. That's the one I'm going to be focusing on today. So let's just have a look at it in the App Store. Um, so I've got this little blue logo in the top left corner. Um, Seeing AI is a free app, which is always nice. Um, and there's quite a good description of it lower down. Um, it's quite highly rated, 4.2, good, good positive comments about it as well. Um, so that's the icon that you'd be looking for on an iPad if you're looking for it. Okay, so that's what it looks like in the Apple App Store. Let's open it up in for real and see what it looks like. And this is a Seeing AI app. Normally, I'd have the camera, the camera operating like this, so I can see around. But I'm going to cover up the camera for quite a part, quite a bit of this, or bits of this presentation. Otherwise, it'll start becoming very, very confusing. Um, right, Seeing AI is a free app from Microsoft for the iPad and iPhone. It's not available for Android devices, although there are similar um, apps available for Android devices. There's a series of icons at the bottom of the screen. Quickly tell you what they are all about. The first one at the bottom left is called short text. So short on text. Next one is document. Document. Then there is product. Product. And person. Person. And then there's currency. Currency. And scenes. Scene. Preview. Handwriting. Handwriting. Preview. Color. Preview. Gray. And the last light. one is for light or dark. Handwriting. I'll preview. quite often go back to handwriting because it's a nice sort of neutral one that doesn't do anything when it's activated unless it's pointed at some piece of handwriting. So that's quickly going through the various options. Now I'll go through through each of these options again in a little bit more detail. Uh, first, but first, I should say, as mentioned, I'm using an iPad. 
I actually find think that it's probably easier to use seeing AI with um, an iPhone because there are times when you'd be wanting to take a picture of something and holding the device at the same time. That's a lot easier on a small device like an iPhone rather than an iPad. That means the iPad you have to use two hands, which doesn't mean means sometimes you're there are other things you might want to do like holding a book open and you suddenly run out of hands. Um, if you're using it on um, of an iPhone, you will start to lose some of these icons at the bottom because you only see about three or four on the screen at the one time. So what you can do is you can go up to this menu option up here and you can use this to get rid of some of the, the icons. So the, for somebody with, say, dyslexia, for example, if you go into the menu, then settings, there's an option to reorder channels. I type a tap in there. And it sees all these green buttons. If I want, I can turn off some of the features. But I don't want to turn them off. I'll just uh, I'll leave them on. But if I wanted to, I could maybe downgrade something like product. So just tap on these gray lines over on the right and I can move that tap down. But I'll leave it back up in the, the proper place. But say if somebody is used that doesn't need all of these different options of our channels, then you can get rid of the ones or temporarily close them down so you're, they're not going to be in the way. This is particularly for somebody using an iPhone. Other settings, I'm not going to go into these other ones for just now, but configure Siri shortcuts is quite a useful one um, because you can actually show it. That you can you control the, the app using Siri. So if you just want to use, say, short text, you just say, the magic phrase there. I'm not going to say it just now because I set it up and it's suddenly it'll do strange things. You can also choose a voice in this area as well under select voice. But enough of that. Right, I'm going to go into the short text. The short text like item, which is the one bottom left, like that is very useful for reading basically short pieces of text. It's not so good for longer bits, but imagine I was out for a walk and I've had a dog with me, um, just come to a, see, see a fence in the field, and there might be a sign on this fence. So let's just quickly read the fence, read the sign. Processing. Danger, dangerous chemicals. And I'm in the wrong bit. Never mind. Here short text. Danger. This is a short text. Dangerous option. chemicals. Okay, I'll just do that again because it's danger chemic. So danger. turn it on. Dangerous chemicals. Danger. And it starts reading instantly. The danger. It's dangerous less, chemicals. I think I've got the message now. It's less good at trying to read and poem larger to parts of text. Two. I by Layla Josephine. Which century was this written in, and why do you think that? Do you think you would have liked to meet Leila Josephine, and why? 3. Halle by Sully top? MacLean. He Which century was this off. written in, and why do you think that? Screen. What language is the poem written in? There's a translation below the poem. Do you see any words that are the same, or almost the same in both languages? Okay. Taybridge Disaster by William Tope has McGonagall Gentry was this written in, and why do you think that find the poem amusing? Do you think you were meant to find it being deleted from the second verse? Can you guess what? It's difficult to stop the text. Right. I find it very, very fast, uh, very accurate. And it's really quite impressive in these ways, but it is quite hard to control what the text is actually reading. So if you've got a piece of sheet of paper with lots of text on it like this, you're probably better to use the second option, which is document. document. So just turn to document mode. And Top and right edge is not visible. I no edge is visible. I found it quite confusing at first because I no thought it's always visible. needed to have the edges in no place. No edge is visible. The edges are designed to help somebody with a visual impairment no to edge focus is on visible. the page. But if I just tap on this, no edges. I don't have to worry too much about the edges. And it'll start reading. 
And so this is the text that's been reading. I can make the text bigger by clicking on the buttons on the bottom right. There's an A plus to, to magnify it, A minus to bring the size down a bit. If I want to speak the text, it goes to the bottom left corner and there's the play button. Instructions for this assignment, you will have to read four poems and answer questions on them to complete this assignment. One Okay, it's using one of the default voices. The default voices in Seeing AI can actually be quite confusing. In the settings that showed earlier on, you can select a voice, and I've got one voice selected in that. But it can also use voiceover voices, uh, even though I've got voiceover turned off on my iPad. And so I can end up, might end up with about two or three different voices. It's all a bit random in terms of which one I'll be speaking at any particular time. But this feature is, again, it's pretty accurate. It's not quite as fast as the um, short text, but it also needs to be connected to Wi-Fi, whereas the short text doesn't need to be connected to Wi-Fi. So it's really quite good for when you're out and about. This is one for reading documents. Um, See, if I want to save this document, I can press on the share button, which is the bottom right, like that, and get an option to share the text. And I think I'll share it to notes. And here we go. I can now, if I wanted, to, I can edit this text. Um, I can speak it out again. Read four poems and answer questions on them to complete this assignment. One was written in the 18th. Right, so it's quite, it's got a pretty decent set of features, this one. Um, I think I will now move on to the next item. To move back out of it, I press on the arrow in the top left, like that. Bottom product. This next one is going to be the barcode reader. It's about the product reader. So I'm just going to let you see this one. Here we go. Process blue dragon sweet chili yeah, dipping sauce so 190 megabits. Don't get much time to point the thing, set line thing up properly. But it's for somebody with a visual impairment, that's really quite impressive for how speed, how fast it'll go. But for me, I just prefer it to be a little bit slower so I can focus on what I'm doing with it. Um, so it's got a quick description up on the underneath the picture. If I want more information, I can type on more info. Um, and again, I can read this. Okay. Occasionally you'll come across a product that it doesn't have in, any information for. It's taking the um, barcode information from a centralized database and there are occasional products that have come across that it doesn't actually have, that they're obviously not part of the database, so it doesn't have any information that it can bring up for these products. Next, oh, next one is the person icon. This is this one's a bit of fun. Tap on that. Person. And I'm going to let you see myself. One face near top right, less than. One face near right edge, less than a meter. One face near center, less than a meter away. One face processing. 65 year old man looking neutral. Oh. I'm slightly upset by that because I'm not quite I'm not quite 65 yet. I'm a little bit under that, but never mind. Um, I was expecting it to actually say that it was recognising me because I haven't given uh, given my name because it's it should be able to associate the the image with me, but for some reason it wasn't. It can be a little bit temperamental from time to time. Is Alan near centre? Zero faces. A few more sort of a. Uh, 
faces that you can identify. One face, two faces, Let's four see. faces, seven faces. I'm not going to be too ambitious and try to Person identify too many. Two people detected 50-year-old woman okay. with brown hair looking happy, 46-year-old man looking happy. Let's try that again. Process. Two people detected 52-year-old yeah, woman with brown hair looking That's happy, 53-year-old man looking happy. That's picking up Shirley and I think probably Craig. It's sometimes hard to work out just who is recognizing. Let's try that again one last time. Processing. Five That's people five detected 53-year-old woman with brown hair looking happy, 53-year-old man looking happy, 33-year-old man with brown hair looking neutral, 51-year-old woman looking happy, 54-year-old woman with blonde hair looking happy. It tends to underestimate the ages, or perhaps these are just very old photographs. Never mind. Um, this will actually be very useful for somebody with visual impairment in a room with a crowd of people. Uh, as long as he had photographs of these, of these people stored on a, his, his device, he could just sort of scan around the room and see somebody standing at the far side who that he recognised, and then he could just go across and chat to them. It just makes them things much more sociable than, than, than they would otherwise be. Zero right. faces. Back to oh, next one. Currency. I found it doesn't read Scottish pound notes. It only reads paper money. One face near bottom edge. One two faces. Okay. Twenty US dollars. So that's Twenty the US one. dollars. Twenty dollars. Ten US dollars. It's quite fast to recognise. Ten them, US dollars. I borrowed this money from Shirley. Ten US dollars. Twenty US yesterday. dollars. Twenty US dollars. Yeah, she had some. I only had. Twenty um, US dollars. I only had Scottish notes. I had a Canadian note, very old Canadian note, which was instead of it was a five dollar bill, but they kept saying ten dollars, which wasn't so good. It's very good also identifying objects in a view. So I'm going to go across to my window and let you see the view from my bedroom window. Right there. Scene preview. Processing. Probably a house with a driveway. Yeah, it's a house of the main road, so it's not far off. I can explore different objects. Processing. One item detected. Move your finger over the screen to explore. House. It's only identified one item. I'd have expected it to identify this object up here as a tree, but it didn't quite make it. Never mind. Again, it's quite useful being able to sort of navigate around, helping people with uh, somebody who's got visual impairment to navigate around. Back to, all oh, right, one of my favorites. Uh, this will be the handwriting recognition that comes up next. So we'll just get rid of, remove the notes. Here's some scribbled handwriting. I'll just take a photograph of this. Processing. Probably a white box with a uh, black label. I've got the wrong setting. There we go. Handwriting Keep preview. To move on. Processing. This is a sample of my terrible handwriting. I hope that Sang Al can cope with it. Yeah, it had different difficulty recognizing seeing AI for some reason, but then I think that my scroll there was particularly bad. Again, if I want to share it, I can tap on share at the bottom. And I can share it into notes. Um, the text doesn't come across, but we can copy the text. Like that. And now tap on share. And go to notes. So I've got the photograph in the top right. 
and I could tap down here and paste the text in. So if you've got, you've now been able to take printed text from a sheet of paper, bring it into notes for editing. Now we're taking handwriting, converting that into digital text, and I can now edit this if I want to. Okay, a couple of other options that I want to look at very, very quickly. One is the color option. Cut brown. Just point it at something as a color. Gray. Black. Gray. Go to the window. Green. That's pointing out there. So it's quite good at color identification. You can imagine somebody looking for, say, a red car and points out different cars until he finishes one. Well, the stripe does red. Green and brown. Okay. Gray. Final option I'm going to look at is the light option. Light. This is this will give you a sort of fairly low tone when you're in an area that's dark. But as you move around, yes, the light meter. If you're pointing the iPad at somewhere that's quite dark, it gets a fairly low note. If you move around towards a window, then it suddenly gets a much higher note. This is quite useful for somebody who's totally blind in a room. and They know there's a window in the room somewhere, but it allows them to orient the direction in which they're facing. For example, I'm now, because I've got this high note, I can tell that I'm now facing the window, whereas in other areas, this. I just have to find the window and I can now know, navigate my way around from there. There's one other couple of set of features I want to Handwriting. briefly let you see. Um, this is one which is, I think is quite useful and I think it deserves a place on the main menu, on the main like, um, list of items under the topic bar. And that's the Browse Photos option, which I'm going to go into here. What it can do is it'll describe contents of a photograph, like this Probably one. Probably that path through the forest, Sunday, 7.44. OK, that's fair enough. But when it gets actually becomes quite useful, is a situation text sort of like this. Boxburn, Dunbar, contains text, Thursday, 14.19. Imagine a situation which occurs quite regularly where there's people with dyslexia in a class and the teacher is using a whiteboard. Um, in theory, in a, an ideal situation, the pupil with dyslexia who might need the notes would be given provided with notes before the class starts, just so that it makes it a lot easier for him to, to follow the lesson. Sometimes, for various reasons, these sorts of things don't happen. Or somebody forgets to provide uh, a handout on the homework, for example, puts it up on the whiteboard. So, a person with dyslexia could take a photograph of a whiteboard. It's not always as straightforward as you might think because of issues in terms of glare. Uh, but having got the photograph, if it gets a photograph, even just having a photograph by itself is better than nothing because you can actually see the questions and work things out for yourself. But if you want to know what the questions are, tap on Explore on the bottom of this, bottom right. Processing. 12 items detected. Move your finger over the screen to explore. Just wait a couple of seconds for it to finish processing. And now. Read chapter one of Danny. Homework for Monday the 17th of May. And it reads the text the out. Following, read chapter one of Danny, the champion of the world and answer. The following questions. One, who was the most important person in the early life? Author. Two, how did his father earn a living? Three, do you think the author enjoyed his early years? And why do you? Okay. 12 items detected. It's Move not, your finger over. It's not perfect, but it's pretty good. Under lockdown, we're quite often getting people approaching us. Our teachers were frequently downloading workshops or worksheets from the internet for pupils to do. And then people were coming back to us and saying, these 
I can't actually access the text in these worksheets. I think um, quite often these things are produced from images of text, some of the sort of photograph of, of some text, um, and it's just very hard to read. So one of the options for accessing this sort of material would be to use Seeing AI. So you can just, if you've got an image of the text you're meant to use, then you can use Seeing AI to read it back. Okay, I'm going to finish at this point. Um, I hope that you have found the webinar to be of some interest and of some use. I'm really quite impressed with seeing AI. It's not, it's not a perfect app, but it does an awful lot of very good things. Um, considering that it's free, then it's well worth getting on your device. So I will stop sharing. I screen at this point. Excellent. Thank you very much, Alan, for that. Um, it's really great to see how the app can really turn the visual world into an audible experience and all the different features that you showed there. So thank you very much. A um, couple of questions immediately we've got here. Um, well, first of all, Gizzy thinks you've got a very pretty view from your house. Yes. Uh, so that was the first thing. <laughs> Uh, but, uh, a question from Angela. Is it possible to have it speak in different languages? Oh, good question. It's, it is selecting voices from the iPad. So if you selected a ger say a German voice on the iPad, it would read it would read back in German. It's a little bit tricky. Oh, well, yeah, I'm. I'll just, I'll just I could actually. Yeah. Uh, not that I've, I've just quickly googled it and just to see what it's saying on the languages and it just says that um, it's added five new languages so it will speak in Dutch, French, yeah. German, Japanese and Spanish. I've just, on, on my iPad, I'm not sharing it at the moment, but I've just gone into the speech section and there's an option to select voices. It starts off with a lot of English voices. It's not getting voices from other countries in my options here. But if I was using one of the, some of the standard Apple iPad voices, then I probably would be able to select um, other languages. But it's, or maybe that you would have to say that you're using, you're wanting German voices at some point. But there's no reason why you might have to do a bit of fiddling around to get these voices. But I, so I'm not seeing obviously where to get them on my iPad. But okay, yes, and I'm, Rachel. I'm sure Rachel's asking, what would you suggest for Android? So it's a similar, expect a similar sort of scanning app for Android? Right, a couple of the, um, things. If it's just for scanning text or taking photographs of some text and reading it out, then my favorite would be Claro Scan Pen Reader. Claro Scan Pen Reader for the iPad costs $9.99, but for Android devices, it's free. Um, and if you're in Scotland, then with the, Andro the advantage of the Android devices is you can use Scottish voices to read the text. Um, it can, it's, can, you can get downloads the Cereproc, um Scottish voices from the Android to have the Play Store for I think it's 59 pence each, which is pretty good deal actually. Um, and having Claro Scan Pen running it for free, then that would be quite useful. If you're looking for more something with more of the sort of visual impairment features, there is an app, I think it's called Envision AI. Um, I haven't looked at it properly because it's only available on a subscription and it costs a significant amount of money. Um, whereas I'm mean, seeing AI is free. We love free. Any more questions? Uh, just please do type, type them in at the moment in the chat pane. Um, I was just wondering, Alan, and all the different features you've shown there, is there anywhere within the app, if you just want a wee reminder of what each each feature does, is there anything oh, that we yes. can do? Um, there that? is, um, a, you'll probably see, you might have seen a question mark appearing, I think, at the top right corner of the screen. 
um, a few times. I, that's the one I forgot to show. Uh, but that's if you want a wee bit more information about how to use things, then tap on the, the, the question mark. There's lots of videos of seeing AI as well. Um, quite a few have been done by Microsoft. Um, so if you're just wanting further to find out more things about seeing AI, then just go to YouTube and look for videos on seeing AI. There'll be a whole selection of them. Um, this webinar will probably be available on YouTube in, in due course as well. Uh, yep, no, abs absolutely. Well, so we'll probably just, no, no further questions have come in, so we'll probably just end there. So just a big thank you, Alan, to uh, talking us through all the different features today of Seeing AI. Um, thank you to everyone that's uh, shown up to listen. Uh, the, the recording will be uh, processed and, and it will be available in our archive section of webinars along with many other ones there. Um, and just a reminder that uh, we have our free downloads on our website. Um, so the Dyslexia app wheel, which has this uh, in the reading section, it's got information on scanning apps of which seeing AI is there. And then just because we had the question about the Android apps, we also have an, a, an Android app wheel. So please do go to our uh, information and download section of our website and, and you'll find them there and free to download and please share them, share them widely. Um, and again, thank you very much for, for coming here today. So I'll say goodbye for now. Thank you very much, everyone. Okay. Thanks bye for coming. Bye. bye.